Hi, and welcome to the Positive Prepper. I hope you guys are all having a great day today. Uh, this video is going to talk about um, going solo or joining a MAG um, in an SHTF event. I believe that a lot of preppers are going to tell you that you shouldn't go solo if you can avoid it. It can leave you really vulnerable to different things than if you were in a MAG. Um, this is especially true, um, unfortunately, if you're a woman. Now, don't send hate mail or hate comments uh, because I'm not sexist. I mean, I am a woman, and I believe that women can do just as well in almost any environment as men. Uh, but when we're talking about survival, we are less likely to maintain like the strength and the stamina that men would have. So let's look at the pros and the cons of going solo and being in a mag so that you can decide what's right for you. After all, you know yourself and your abilities better than anyone else can. So first going solo, there's a lot of benefits to you know going through something like that on your own. You only have yourself to take care of, which can make it a lot easier for you to focus on the things that you want to be able to focus on. One person also means that your food and your water is going to go a lot farther, so there's less prep, right? If you have to end up bugging out, one person versus ten person is going to be a lot easier um, to go into the out into that great unknown um, to reach a bug out location. Less people would know about your prepping supply, so that's less people that you have to worry about talking about the things that you've been doing to prepare. And it means that there's more people that probably don't have any idea what you're doing um, and are less likely to know that you're prepared for whatever it is the world throws at you, right? The downside is that you'll have to build those preps up on your own. And that can be really difficult because there is so much that you have to think about. It's not just your food and water. It's how you're going to heat your home. So you may have to cut the wood by yourself. You may have to go on reconnaissance missions. You may have to go um, forage for food and water and what happens in a medical situation you're not going to have anybody there to help take care of you um, so then the last point I think for going solo is that you don't have anybody that's got your back so if you get in a critical or an unsafe situation it's going to be a lot harder for you to get out of it um, unless you are extremely well prepared and have a lot of really good skills to do so. Joining a MAG also has some really good things about it and there are a couple of cons. The benefits for having a MAG, especially in your bug out location, is that you have the ability to uh, secure each point of entry in your location. So if you're new to prepping, which I know that some of you are, part of your home defense, especially in an SHTF event, is if somebody knocks on the door, you have two people go to that door, that point of entry, but you also have one person go to each of the other points of entry. So let's say you have a front door and then you have a a side door into your garage and then you have a back door, right? Two people answer the door where the knock was and then one person goes to each other point of entry. That's because in these types of situations the person that's actually knocking on the door is drawing your attention away from the other points of entry. That's why you always have one person go to each other point. So having a mag allows you to do that. You also have more people with more assets and a broader range of skills. 
So things that you are either physically unable to do or you just don't have a clue where to begin with that, you're going to have other people that are going to be able to fill some of those gaps, which is a, a very necessary thing uh, in an SHTF situation. Some might know uh, more about first aid. Some might know more about hunting. Some might be really good at, like, engineering things out of junk or hunting, gardening, those types of things. These skills are going to be crucial to your survival, especially if that event is a long-term event. And so it's going to be really hard for you to do that on your own. It makes it easier if you have a mag. You are also going to have more people helping you build up those survival uh, preps. So you have more people canning, you have more people um, building up the food supplies, you have more people building up the water supplies or helping you figure out how to keep a long-term water system. Uh, you have more people cutting wood for heat if it gets to that point. You know, these types of things are so super important. The, a couple of the downsides though is that if anybody in your mag is unreliable or ends up being untrustworthy, it puts your entire mag at risk. So you have to make sure that the people that you allow into your mag, and again, mag is mutual assistance group if you're just joining, um, it, it can put that whole mag at risk because all it takes is one person to go out there and, you know, talk about this cool group that they're in and they're doing all this prepping stuff and then pretty soon the word is out not only what you are doing but also where you're putting those supplies as we talked about in a prior video. Another downside is that if your bug in location gets overrun, um, gets breached, you're going to have a larger amount of people that you're going to have to move to your your secondary bug out location. That's not necessarily as easy to do when you have more people, especially if you have a diverse group where your abilities are different. Some of you might be able to run. Uh, some might not be able to. If you have somebody that's um, injured or just overall not in the best of health. Uh, maybe they have chronic bronchitis or lung issues or something. That can slow the whole MAG group down. So you want to think about these things when you're forming your MAG. It doesn't mean, obviously, that if you have really close friends that are in your MAG that are uh, health compromised, that you shouldn't consider having them a part of your mag. They might have other skill sets that are going to be crucial. And so you, these are just all things that you want to think about when you're forming your mag as well. Uh, so again, the risk of having a mag versus going solo is that there's always that risk, of course, that not everybody is going to make it. I'm sure there's a lot more pros and cons to the to uh, going solo versus having a mag that I didn't talk about here, um, and that's fine. No matter which way you go, uh, I'm gonna just kind of real briefly talk about some things that you that can help you lessen the risk of being attacked uh, in your in your bug out location whether you're going solo or if you're with a mag. First of all, keep your, your property and your home looking neat and clean. Uh, the reason for that is if you look like you are overly rich and you have all this fantastic landscaping and you have these, you know, super fancy cars in your driveway or SUVs and, uh, you know, your house looks like a million bucks, you are going to look like a target because they're going to be like, oh, that's where the rich people are. Either we're going to get 
we're going to get the money or we're going to get some cool TVs or, you know, the electronics, um, that type of thing. You also don't want to go on the other side where your yard and your home looks not maintained at all. Because then the thought is that's an easy target, right? Because there's nobody there, you know, whatever their uh, idea is about houses that look that way, that's what they're going to put on you, that, that stereotype, right? Um, especially up where we live, you know, the term is redneck uh, and probably wouldn't even know how to fight us off, right? So you want to maintain that balance. You want to just have everything neat and clean. You want to look lived in. You don't want to show off your money, but you also don't want to look like your dirt poor either. You want to try to just maintain a normal um, live, way of living. Couple other things, close your blinds at night. Uh, don't let people come into your property and be able to look in your windows and scope out not just what you have, but the layout of your house. So keep your blinds closed at night. If you don't have a dog, put up beware of dog signs anyways, because that is a, a big deterrent. Um, use security lighting, security systems. If you can't afford it, because I know those cameras can be pretty spendy, put up signs that you have security. Again, it's just another deterrent. You can get uh, fake cameras reasonably cheap and just kind of scatter them in, in strategic locations. It gives the appearance that whoever is on your property is being watched. The same is true with your motion sensors and motion lights. You want to have lighting outside, especially directly outside the house and especially over your points of entry. Uh, replace and and I think this is something that everybody talks about in every video when it comes to prepping the the screws that you get with your uh, door hinges and your your deadbolts usually they have like really short screws right you want to take those out and you want to replace those with three to six inch screws it makes it harder for them to uh, kick in the door Use night locks for your, your doors and windows. And then they also have this thing called shatterproof film that you can put over your windows. So if they throw a rock or a brick, uh, the film protects your window from, from shattering. If you are in a, an SHTF event, and this doesn't necessarily have to do with the basic uh, security part, uh, but remember that your um, walls are not going to protect you from bullets. Uh, sorry, the phone was ringing in the back. Uh, the walls aren't going to protect you from bullets, so you just kind of want to start thinking about how you're going to build that up. And this is going to be um, covered a lot more in depth in another video. It's just things that I want you to keep in mind, okay? In an SHTF, black out your windows using latex paints or blackout curtains. Don't let your garbage pile up outside. Don't keep all your supplies in one location. Keep some supplies hidden in your vehicle. Uh, in case you need to leave and then always make sure that your vehicle is facing outward in case you need to make a great escape. And again, these are things that we're going to cover way more in depth uh, in a future video. So where is the bright side of any of this? Chances are if you are watching prepping videos, it's because you've either, either already started prepping or you've started thinking about starting prepping, right? Uh, because of things going on maybe outside of those spaces. You're most, you've most likely talked to other people about it, getting their opinion, you know, kind of that nudge, nudge, wink, wink, do you, you know, are you a prepper? <laughs> uh, it used to be 
if you were a prepper, you were a paranoid, crazy lunatic hoarding supplies and, you know, thinking about future events that are never going to happen. That's not true today. Today, being a prepper, especially if you look at what happened in Texas and what's going on politically, more and more people are joining the prepping community uh, by, by quite a few numbers uh, because they recognize that it's a smart thing to do. It doesn't mean that we think that there's an H SHTF event that's going to happen tomorrow, right? But I don't think the people in Texas thought that it was going to be as bad as it was either. It's just being prepared. That's all it is. Uh, so you've probably already talked to other people about it. We're social creatures, right, as humans. So it's not a surprise that in a crisis situation, we gravitate towards other people because they're safety in numbers, right? It makes us feel more safe, safe and protected. Uh, and then also, again, and I will say this in a lot of the videos, remember that you are not alone when you have God on your side. So part of your prepping should also be prepping your soul. So that's my video for today. I hope that it helped, uh, especially the parts about the pros and cons of going solo versus joining a mag. I personally, my opinion, join a mag, find that group, start talking about it. Um, hit the notification bell, please and subscribe to my channel and then leave any questions or comments in the section below. If at any time there's a topic that you want covered, I'd be happy to do a video on it. My next video is going to be about mags and how they should be set up for those of you who are thinking about creating one or joining one uh, so that you can make sure that either you or they are taking the right steps to make sure that you have a secure and a strong group. So thanks for watching The Positive Prepper. God bless.